Hi, it's Samantha with Clawfoot Farm and welcome to April and let's walk around the garden and do a tour of what's growing in the garden this April. So we're in the backyard and first thing I want to show you is what is going on with our fence. So we found these beautiful birdhouses for sale and picked them up for a really good price and my husband put them all on the fence. How adorable does that look? I am in love with that. Here's our backyard garden. I'm going to give you an overview first. The long backyard garden here. And what we have planted, the artichokes are here. We have some little lettuce. This is our May Queen lettuce. And May Queen is a, um, a loose headed lettuce. That is that will, that tolerates a lot of um, lower temperature. And here are some radishes. These radishes were planted last fall. I'm gonna just step over here, and they're just about to flower and bolt. But let's see if we can't pull a few radishes up. Oh yeah, that one is bolting. We were getting some good radishes. That one's that one's all right. So we're getting some radishes. So some pretty fine radishes there. Here's our this is the mint. This is actually a chocolate mint, which I really prefer. It has kind of a milder taste than a peppermint. And it really is just beautiful with the dark, um, almost bur that bar that dark burgundy color on its stem and on the veining of the leaves. Uh, over here in this pot, we have some purple bok choy, and that is coming up nicely. And the garlic. Garlic is great. Uh, April has been a really wet month. So I have not been able to be out and weeding as much as I would have liked. Um, but it's all right because May will be beautiful. And okay, we're going to our corner garden where we have some parsley and some little dill growing in the corner. Our rhubarb is coming into age here. So rhubarb is looking just fantastic. We're getting some, there we go, some nice stalks of rhubarb coming up. And I'm gonna step right over and show you our asparagus. Let's go to here. And here's our some asparagus. Oh, this, okay, right here is where a tiny little space, so you see this tiny space in between our bench and the um, edge of the bed here, they actually have put some self-heal right in the middle here. So those are self-heal plants because when you're on a small space, every little inch counts. And I don't wanna to have to weed that space, so I'm planting it with a plant that we don't have to weed. Okay, so out here, the spring flowers are blooming. They are gorgeous. And the raspberries, and the raspberries, <laughs> There we go, the raspberries are starting to show their blossoms. They're almost ready to bloom, there we go. 
Okay, so this, this bed. Let's talk about this bed. This bed behind me is a cautionary tale to those who are too ambitious and want to plant before your ground is ready. That was me. So this bed is 16 feet long and it's brand new this year. Brand new in the fact that I actually, like that's cardboard there on the edges. I just put cardboard down on top of the grass and then wheelbarrowed in some dirt from another part of our yard and piled it here and then planted. So the plants are doing great and they're growing and, they're, and it's, they're, everyone's happy. The weeds are doing great also this space i have been out here weeding because it's in the front yard right on the street right in the front of our house so i kind of wanted it to be pretty and weeded but because i did not cover this with a plastic or a tarp and we just threw the plants in the plants are happy all of the weeds are happy also because any weed seed that was in that soil has germinated and had a lovely chance to grow um, right alongside the plants. So there's your cautionary tale, but otherwise here we have a whole bunch of that winter, the May Queen lettuce. And these These are quinoa. This is the main reason why I wanted this bed, whereas for these plants. So these are quinoa and there is, it's planted all the way down the row. And I'm trying to see how much that will do. And then over here we have Asian greens, some Asian cabbage. I always love to have some spring blooms also because how lovely is that I really do love to mix up the flowers with the vegetables because that just puts a joy in my heart so spring spring is for me definitely a season of promise and anticipation. I love the later spring, like May, April, May, and for us June really is kind of spring too. Um, it's when all the plants are growing, um, just starting their growth, and no one, none of the plants have gotten anything um, weird. We, there's not like deadheading and um, a lot of trimming or pruning, uh, not a whole lot of harvesting either, and just everything is growing, and the promise of that is so lovely and beautiful. It's also time, because it is April, of planting out and it's kind of like being on the roller coaster where like you've you've already waited in line you've already bought your ticket you've got in you're you're buckled in and the ride has taken off and you're going up that hill so you're going up 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 and you know it's gonna be wild and it's gonna be fast and it's gonna be crazy but for right now the view is perfect and the anticipation is nothing but excitement that is April for me. Here is our corner garden. And this garden is also new this year to our farm. Uh, however, we are not seeing the same amount of weed pressure here because we did have this covered for about six months before planting. So this is where our tomatoes are going to go. But last month in March, I planted out the seeds that we got from the seed swap. Well, at least the spring ones, the spring seeds. 
and we have some little guys coming up. So those are radishes. These are the peas. These are the pink peas that we got. And there's one over there. I think that those are kohlrabi that's coming up. And a whole, this is harder to see with the dark ground, but a whole bunch of lettuce is also coming up. We have some peas over there in the second row. And although it is hard, very really hard to see, there are baby, baby broccolis coming up on this row as well. And there's more raspberries. And here, here we have our raised bed garden. And in these four tires, we have our potatoes. And we have four potato plants in each tire. And they are coming up. We also have a million baby raspberries. If you get a, if you build a raspberry patch that is very successful, you will be able to sell those raspberry starts um, for a reasonable price to people in your community and really make the money back on the raspberry plant sales. We sell about 50 to 100 plants per year. Um, from these raspberry patches and give away. So we give away and sell them. And we still have a lot. Okay, this is our onion patch. You saw how we planted these. And the onions are coming up magnificently. All right, here is our corner garden. This garden also is new this year for our yard. And this garden is also new this year to our farm. Uh, however, we are not seeing the same amount of weed pressure here because we did have this covered for about six months before planting. So do you see the difference in that? So this is where our tomatoes are gonna go, but this spring, last month, so this is where our tomatoes are going to go. But last month in March, I planted out the seeds that we got from the seed swap. Well, at least the spring ones, the spring seeds. And we have some little guys coming up. So those are radishes. These are the peas. These are the pink peas that we got. And there's one over there. I think that those are kohlrabi that's coming up. And a whole, this is harder to see with the dark ground, but a whole bunch of lettuce is also coming up. We have some peas over there in the second row. And although it is hard, very really hard to see, there are baby, baby broccolis coming up on this row as well. And in these four tires, we have our potatoes. And we have four potato plants in each tire. And they are coming up. And the onions are coming up magnificently. So we have some great onions coming up and let's go to this bed here alrighty so in this bed these are our brassicas and so we have some cauliflower and some broccoli and right along the edge are some tiny onions these are the onions that I started from seed 
So another thing I did is planted, interplanted a few, these are snapdragons, and there's some snapdragons in thyme, and also some, here we go, and also some little nasturtiums growing up. When those get, when all of these plants grow uh, larger and get as they mature, it's gonna be really beautiful with the flowers intermingled with all of the vegetables too. It really adds a pop of color in your beds. And so over here, this pot, we have some sage that actually looks like it made it over the winter. I don't think that is dead. So that's fantastic. And oregano. Oregano is a wonderful perennial in this area. So once you plant it, you will never have to plant it again. And strawberry blossoms. So the strawberry blossoms are all on our alpine strawberries. They Alpine strawberries, you cannot find anywhere else, um, except for when you grow it. They don't store at all, so you basically have to pick them and then eat them. Like pick them, take them in, eat them. They don't store at all. They are so flavorful. If you've never had a, add an alpine strawberry, find one and taste it. You will never, ever know a strawberry flavor like that. This bed is fantastic. We have bok choy in the front. There we go. So bok choy, this bok choy is ready to eat. You just pick it. Look at that. So we pretty much have enough um, greens growing in the garden to actually make salads. So by, by the middle of April, to have that accomplished is a very big goal of mine and I'm super excited to be able to have enough greens to pick to make small salads in our garden. Peas, these are the peas that were growing early in the garden and then they got battered and beat up by the wind <laughs> and we didn't think that they were going to make it. Well, they made it and look. And look, we have a pea that's growing. So the peas are coming up, they're coming along. And then in the back of the peas, we have fava beans. Those I also have never grown. So we'll see what they do. Here's our parking strip. And right on the edge, we have some herbs here. So right on the edge, we've got, that's yarrow. The yarrow came back this year, perennial. There's white whorehound. And all of these tiny little guys are self-seeded calendula. And they are all over the edge right here, which is perfect, exactly what we wanted. Then on the back side of our parking strip, because it is right by, right on the road here, we have our pollinator garden. And of course, we have some tulip bulbs. And when the tulip bulbs are done blooming, then we will plant some cabbages and kale in here. Um, this garden, a lot of these, what you're going to see here, was actually just left from last year. So these, these are beets, so beets and parsley. These beets were here from last year, they just overwintered. Um, they make really good beet greens. This is a kohlrabi. I mean, look at that monster. Oh my goodness. Those are, that's three kale plants. Those are curly kale from last year. 
I love how they look. They're so amazing. We are still running down here and grabbing bits of kale um, and eating them. And you actually can eat these little, the, fla the flowerettes just before they flower. Get them and cook them like a broccolini. But they, they really, um, this kale, I mean, look how tall it is. Whew, tall as me. But the kale will actually, it's actually a really good way, like overwintering these crops, even if they just bolt and, and don't become a food crop in your garden. It's really a good way to keep your soil covered but also a good way to have a front yard garden that still has some aesthetic value instead of just having bare earth and bare dirt and weeds growing. Parking strip. There's so much going on in that tiny little space, even in spring. And there's our raised bed garden. Alrighty, well, Thank you for walking through the garden with me and uh, I'd love to hear what you have going on in your April garden as well. Um, hopefully this inspired you to get out and plant something and thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.